Okay, so now you've got a plugin if you've been following along in the series and you'd like to figure out how to actually test that NeoVim plugin. Now, there are a variety of options for doing this right now. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it with plenary using the plenary test harness stuff, but basically more or less everything is the same if you wanted to try like mini.test or some of the other options. There's a lot of good options for how you want to set this up. Uh, but it, it just it, like at least the basic idea of what we're doing, I'll show you and you would just follow sort of different instructions in like the mini test library if you wanted to run that one instead. Uh, so what do we want to do in this in this option? Let's write something that tests our parse slides function. Now, usually what I would do is if I want to call if I want to have something that sort of exists uh, that I want to test, but I don't want to expose to people. Good option is just do something like M and we'll just say parse. Whoops parse lines is parse lines okay because we don't actually want to um is it not called parse lines parse slides sorry uh, we don't actually want to expose this to other people uh to use and like uh we're supporting this but we do want to expose it so that we can test it so we'll maybe prefix it with an underscore and now what we want to do is we want to sort of assert what the end result is going to look like and we've already installed plenary because we have telescope in this setup so we have access to some nice functions like plenary busted file and directory busted is uh like a lua test framework that we emulate inside of uh plenary so what we need to do here is I'm going to make a new, well, let's, let's make a new file and we'll just call this tests. Okay. And inside of tests, we'll do something and let's just call this parse slides spec.lua. And it's important that the file name ends with spec. Once we do that, uh, we have a few things that are going to be available to us. The first one is we have this function describe and we can say, uh, present dot parse slides. Okay. And you put in the first one, sort of a name for this. And then you also give a function to run. And then inside of here, we say it um, should parse an empty file or something like this. I don't know, right? We just don't want it to error. Okay. And it's going to say, hey, both of these things aren't, um, don't exist. So let's go ahead and do GRA for, whoops, G, GRA. Let's just say this and let's do as a defined global and we'll mark it as a defined global. So once we have these, we should be able to do something like assert r same, and we can say uh, we want basically like an empty list or something. And let's do, let's get ourselves local parse is require uh, present uh, parse slides, something like this, okay? And we want to parse uh, basically just an empty list. So we should have almost nothing inside of here. And how are we going to do this? Well, we can actually just run plenary busted file. Um, and we should be able to just say here, beautiful. And this gives us, uh, we'll run this. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Spec here. Uh, let's let's run this. And we can see inside of here it says, hey, actually what you should be expecting is it should have slides with an empty slide inside of it. Just nothing inside of it. You're like, that's actually a good point. We do need to say that this is really slides. And then inside of here, we have title is nothing and body is just is just this, right? So we can go here. Let's run this again with plenary busted file. And we say, okay, body, title, nothing, uh, slides. Oh, right. I forgot. This is actually a list of these, right? So we can go like this and then that's better. Now, when we run this, we'll get success and we saw this answer. So what I like to do is if we go back to our like plugin here, in my own config, let's say um, test Lua, we might add something like vim key map set normal mode, maybe space T for test. I might do something like uh, command plenary uh, busted. What is it again? Plenary busted file. Plenary busted file. And then I might say percent here, and then we can say enter. Uh, and if we do this, and we go back to the file that we had here, when we do space T. This will run this. Now, I actually just recalled that we have space T already mapped something in here, space TT. So maybe we want to do space um, TF for test file. And we'll do that. So we go back to our spec file. When we do space TF, we run this right away. And now we can start iterating on different tests here. So if we go inside of here and we say it should parse a file uh, with one slide, okay? And let's also go um, GRA here and we'll say uh, disable diagnostics in this file. Okay, so we'll say we don't care that we don't have this field for now. Uh, let's, instead of just parsing nothing, we'll parse uh, this is the first slide. 
and this is the body okay so that's sort of like if those are the things that we're trying to parse we'll get this when we run this file we'll say hey uh no there was a body and a title now right so this is the diff of these two tables here's what we expected uh, and that's obviously not what we expected we should see this is the first slide and we should see here saying this is the body okay now when we execute this we see that we get exactly the right stuff awesome this is this is exactly what we're looking for right so this lets us start writing different options i also like to do local equal is assert dot r dot same so that i don't have to write this every time and then change this to be equal um here whoops and then also change this one to equals like this so when we run this we get success so now is where you could start saying okay what if we tried to get a little bit smarter with some of these options what do we want to do we may come back to this later in the series of making parse slides a little bit smarter but for now this gives us at least the base to have something that runs these tests so that's nice we have this thing where we can run the tests locally but that's not exactly all you'd want from writing tests ideally you'd write this in sort of like a more I don't know uh you want this to run in ci right so you can get a green checkbox when you're done and the simplest way to do this and the way that i always do is i always just go to my telescope <laughs> repo here i copy this workflow right here and then we can go and uh make a uh dot github folder and then we need a workflows folder right it's workflows i always forget uh i always forget this uh oh whoops i messed that up github yes I want to do that and then we go workflows like this and then we might do ci.yaml like this and then we can paste in tests and so now i just change anything that i had from telescope before which is like i uh we don't need this devacons one and now we can write a little make file that runs the tests here so that's great so all we need to do now is we make a make file and we can just go look at telescopes make file here and we can say this like this we don't need the other ones right now we'll get back to doing um uh like lints and doxygen later and the thing that we need here is lua tests we actually put this inside of uh change word just tests like this and we need to make a minimal init this minimal init basically all it does is it tells um it tells neovim how to load and what it needs to do when you're creating a new test file so we can make a scripts directory scripts here and we'll put a minimal minimal init.vim you can make this a lua file too it doesn't really matter uh, we don't need tree sitter lua for this we don't need to do telescope but we do probably want to do load present in case we have anything here and we'll put this like that so now what we should have is if we've done this correctly uh let's go to our um present file here and make sure yeah okay great we should be able to do make test and this should run locally and it should run these two and we get a successful pass that's great what we can do now is normally what you do in this scenario is you would put this into its own pr uh, and then you could iterate on this but I don't really care to do that so we're going to go here get commit dash m um pushing to master live and we're going to push right here if we head over to our present neovim we're going to see that we push to master live right here and now when we have this uh ci.yaml this is on push or at on pull request we'll see we have a pending uh request here this is nice you really don't have to have this if you're not doing something that like touches the file system or anything really for our plugin we could probably just delete like the windows options and the mac os options and everything like that but it's not it's not the worst idea to have it just in case um and so now these are all going to queue these different jobs we should be able to just hop over to here and we'll see that we set up the job we do everything and we complete the job right we run the tests here it says everything passed we get green check marks bada boom bada bing now you have ci going right here and of course something is wrong here because probably like mac is a problems this job was canceled i don't know why nobody knows why mac problems who cares uh but if you wanted to remove those which in this case i do think that that's probably uh fine we really don't need like to be handling all of those so i'm just going to delete this even just for the um option of i'm just going to say i don't really care about these other options here we just want to run it on nightly we can do this we can commit this remove other um os because i don't really care we're just writing this for ourselves 
we should now get this pushed here once again you could put this in a branch i don't really care to do that in this particular case um we're just going to run this inside of uh telescope here right we're gonna okay yep we're checking to make sure everything's updated for us we probably really don't even need we don't really need rip grip so that's fine too we could have just deleted that too and i guess while we're at it why not um we'll go to here get hub or close this yeah because we don't really need to do actually any of this we don't need to do this yeah we don't we, we can just remove this as well we'll just remove that too who cares uh later you could add other revisions if you wanted but i think that this is just fine and we don't need to have rip grep version here because uh we're not using rip grep inside of this thing and get commit m uh fix remove rip grep because we don't need it as a dependency for what we're doing here uh, that should just speed up our time of executing the test which is nice so if we go and check now again uh you'll see we're running a new test it should be pretty quick now too because we've removed a bunch of the extra stuff here so we just do a quick download beautiful so that's the basic workflow for how I like to do this. Um, you have plenary installed. You can run plenary test file, maybe make a little key map so you can execute it quickly. Um, and you can write your um, assertions about how you want the files to go. And once you've done that, you've tested it locally, maybe make a make file to easily run the tests quickly, add CI to be able to do that remotely and now this will happen anytime someone like makes a pull request or whatever so that's that's it if you were going to use um mini envim here like if you use this mini envim does have a nice mini test library another good option i'm just not as familiar with it uh, but you could try out this mini one and it's almost all the same except you'll have a little bit different setup uh for the plugin itself so anyways that's how you can do testing you should just run it like that it's it runs in separate neovim versions you can try them all you can run them all differently and it's great uh that's it see you see you later Bye bye